Most people think of solar panels as needing to go on a roof or in a field. But did you know that they can also be installed on a wall? We've actually done quite a few wall-mounted solar installations, including one most recently at a house in Buckinghamshire, where we installed 18 panels split over the south and west facing walls. So how much do wall-mounted panels generate compared to equivalent pitched roof solar systems? And are wall-mounted panels actually worth installing? And how does the mounting system work and do you need planning permission? I'm going to go through everything in this video and if you have any questions then do feel free to reach out to me. If you would like a quote for wall-mounted solar panels and are within two hours of Reading, then please do get in touch with Spirit Energy and either myself or my colleagues will be happy to provide you with a bespoke design and quotation. So how does the mounting system actually work? Well, it's very straightforward and actually more simple than a roof-mounted system. As with the pitch roof system, you have rails running horizontally, fixed to the wall using multi-monty screws, and then the panels are fixed to the railings using the same clamps that you use for the on-roof system. There are really only three main components, the railings, the screws, and the clamps. As a result of this, the panels are actually pretty quick to install and can be installed at a similar pace to a system mounted on a concrete tile roof. Contrary to what you might think, Wall-mounted solar panels have the same planning regulations as pitch roof mounting systems and fall under permitted development in most cases. You just need to make sure that firstly, the panels do not protrude more than 200 millimeters off the surface of the roof or wall. And secondly, do not extend higher than the highest part of the roof, excluding chimneys. It also says that you should try and preserve the building and local areas visual impact but I've never seen that actually throw a problem for solar panels under permitted development. If you're in a conservation area, listed building or area of outstanding natural beauty, then again, the rules are the same as they would be for on-roof solar systems and can vary depending on the specific requirements of your local planning authority. So how much do wall-mounted solar panels generate and do they actually make sense to install? Well, to start with, solar panels that are pitched at 38 degrees on a perfectly south facing roof should generate around 985 kilowatt hours per kilowatt peak over the course of the year. That figure will vary slightly depending on where you are in the country. However, if you're near our office in Reading, then the performance ratio will be very similar. I recently made a video which went back and looked at the data from some of the systems that we fitted nearly 15 years ago back in 2010 and I found that the PVGIS modelling that is used by MCS certified installers in the UK is actually astonishingly accurate for the majority of the year. If you want to learn more about that, then check out the video on screen now. By comparison, an equivalent wall-mounted solar system facing perfectly south with the panels mounted at 90 degrees should generate 695 kilowatt hours per kilowatt peak over the course of a year. So the wall mounted panels will generate 29 to 30% less than the south facing pitched roof system. That's pretty good. A directly east or west facing system pitched on a roof should generate 775 kilowatt hours per kilowatt peak per year. At 695 kilowatt hours per kilowatt peak per year, the wall mounted south facing system is only around 10 or 12% less effective than the east or west facing system that's pitched at 38 degrees on a roof. Interestingly, if the equivalent east facing system was pitched at 98 degrees on a wall, then that should generate around 37% less than if the east facing system was pitched on a roof at 38 degrees. So the drop off between pitched and wall mounted systems on an east facing wall or roof is worse than the drop off for pitched and wall mounted systems facing directly south. This is very interesting, and as you can see from the graph on screen now, which is plotting a system pitched at 10 degrees, 38 degrees, and 90 degrees, the further you deviate from south, the higher the drop-off in performance is for solar panels mounted at steeper pitches. To use a real-life example, the house that we installed the wall-mounted panels on in Buckinghamshire had a wall and roof space both facing the same direction, 62 degrees off south. The six panels on the wall are expected to generate 599 kilowatt hours per kilowatt peak. By comparison, the six on the roof are pitched at 20 degrees and should generate 881 kilowatt hours per kilowatt peak. So in this case, the wall mounted panels are expected to generate around 32% less 
than what the roof mounted panels will generate. So at what point do wall mounted south facing panels actually make more sense than a perfectly pitched roof mounted system? Well, the performance ratios cross over around the 110 degrees off south mark. If you have a system pitched at 38 degrees on a roof that's oriented 110 degrees off south, then you're looking at a performance ratio of 694 kilowatt hours per kilowatt peak over the year. That's one kilowatt hour per kilowatt peak per year worse than the perfectly south facing system pitched on a wall, which should have a ratio of 695 kilowatt hours per kilowatt peak per year. So if you have a house with a north facing roof, a south facing roof and a south facing wall, then your best option is going to be the south roof. But your second best option is actually going to be the south facing wall instead of the north facing roof. Now I'm sure you're thinking, well, why not get an A-frame mounting system, which will give you a better pitch? And this is a fair point. However, there are two issues. Firstly, remember that under permitted development, the panels can't be mounted more than 200 millimeters off the surface of the roof or wall. So if you were to use an A-frame system, then you'd only be able to mount it at about 5.5 degrees before having to apply for planning permission. But if you're willing to do that, then you could look at using an A-frame system to get a better pitch on the panels. The second issue with using an A-frame system is if, like our client in Buckinghamshire, you have multiple rows of solar panels on the wall, then if the top row is pitched at 5.5 degrees, that's going to cast a shadow onto the second row of panels, which will limit the generation throughout the year. So how much do wall-mounted solar panels cost? Well, if it's a straightforward installation that is mounted straight into a brick wall, then you're looking at a very similar ballpark to what you'd pay if you were buying a roof mounted system for a concrete or rosemary tile roof. The potential uplift with wall mounted panels can come if you need to assemble the scaffolding in multiple stages and take down certain sections of the scaffolding while installing the panels. That's when the costs can start to creep up. Thanks for watching and please do ask me any questions. Check out our website or give us a call to learn more about solar and battery storage in the UK and if you're within two hours of Reading, then please do request a quote from Spirit Energy. Please also check out the case study video series that we made, which runs through an, an entire Spirit Energy installation from point of inquiry to the design, survey and install to see what you get when you request a quote with us.